We're back with the 302 engine build. More specifically than that, these new headers we have, Triwise, old school stuff. And we're going to talk a lot about these Triwi headers and why we have Triwise in the first place. You know, we this is normally what we run, right? Just normal long tubes. Why are we going with Triwise and where did I even get them from? Let's let's talk about it. Let's start off by talking about these, you know, right here. The common 4 into 1 long tube header. 4 into 1 meaning 4 pipes into 1 collector. Okay? And now we all know how an exhaust, you know, header works. The pulse comes into the pipe, the exhaust valve shuts. This pulse is coming out of here, you know, a rapid pace. Uh, that creates a low pressure zone here because this is traveling down the pipe. Nothing else can, you know, come in because the exhaust valve is shut. That creates low pressure zone behind the pulse. That low pressure zone helps evacuate the rest of the uh, uh, exhaust gases out of the chamber the next time the exhaust valve opens. And it also helps pull air through the intake side during overlap. That's, you know, the essential, essential thing there. There's also sonic resonant tuning waves going up and down these pipes, you know. As soon as the wave comes down and it hits the end of the exhaust, it'll reflect back up and it'll bounce off the back of the valve and it'll come back down this way. Same thing in the intake, we're not going to talk about that. That's, that's how they work, right? Now while there are many different tuning elements to headers, the main one you're going to look for is primary tube diameter and I guess to a lesser extent collector diameter as well but primary tube diameter is kind of the big one when you're really looking for a set of headers depending on how much power you're making the bigger tubes you're going to want right uh, people can go overboard on that if you go too big the problem is there is not enough exhaust gases filling this tube because of the bigger volume there's not enough gases to be able to fill this tube to properly create a seal. Uh, remember now, this exhaust gases is traveling down the tube, creating a low pressure zone right here. It's not able to create that low pressure zone if it itself is not occupying the diameter of the tube, creating a seal behind it. But, if you're going too small, you can't get the exhaust out as efficiently as you could if it was a bit bigger too. That's the balancing point. And in our case, we have a Mustang, a, a Ford, right? We got shock towers in the way, right? Shock towers that ride right up against these headers. Now that's a problem because we're not able to really upsize the tube diameter based on the amount of power we want to make with this thing. Uh, we're, we're limited, right? It, there's not enough room. And speaking of room, all these four pipes, they take up a lot of it, right? The starters right there, Messing with the starter, with the headers on, pain in the ass. Has to be all done from underneath the car. You can't reach in here and do any of it, right? So, we're stuck. These are 1 and 5 eighths primary tubes. That's really the biggest we can fit on the Mustang at the moment. And, you know, they're kind of dinky, right? Let's look at the Triwise now. Now we come to the Triwise header. And... The reason they're called Tri-Ys is because, well, there's three of them. There's one Y here, one Y there, one Y down here, right? These two cylinders and these two cylinders share a common pipe. Essentially, think of this as another collector, okay? A collector for the, just these two tubes, though. Now, that can help, you know, that can help because ordinarily with a traditional long tube header design, the only time the uh, other tubes can help scavenge out of the other tubes is when it hits the collector, okay? Uh, meaning, when this pulse comes down and it hits this collector, it will then have a pull on the other tubes, helping those come down, okay? Scavenge. Now this is able to do that earlier on. Now, 
what that's going to do is it's going to change the overall RPM in which these headers are tuned for. These are acting more like a shorty header up here, right? Uh, engaging in that power band. But it's kind of nice, you know, having that more scavenging effect going on. More importantly than that, though, and in terms of our case, are these pipes right here, one and seven eighths diameter, okay? We're not able to run a one and seven eighths set of long tube headers, but we can kind of cheat the system a bit with these because when the exhaust pulse comes out, it will just come right into this and it will act as if it's a one and seven eighths primary tube. Remember, these are not all firing at the exact same time. They take turns, okay? So this pipe, you know, essentially forget that that's there. That's your header when that fires. Then forget, you know, that one's there. This is your header when that fires. They share the pipe, but essentially you have a stepped header you know, going from this, I believe, 1 and 5 eighths to 1 and 7 eighths. And in the Mustang, that's going to be key, right? And then they come down here to this collector. Now, this collector is going to tune to a different RPM than these do. This is going to tune more like a traditional long tube header when the pulses reach down here. So all we're doing is just broadening the power band. Yes, it's not as good as a dedicated high RPM header, and it's not as good as a dedicated low RPM header, but you're taking best of both worlds and you're broadening, you know, the mid range. In theory, right? You don't know if that's really what's happening until you actually test it, but in theory, you know, that's a good theory. So, now that we've kind of talked about, you know, the tri-wise, and that's really all there is to it, it's just essentially taking two pipes, combining them together to, form, to allow you to run one bigger tube diameter than you would be able to in a traditional car. If the Mustang did not have uh, shock towers and I could run any primary tube length I wanted, well, you know, there would be a bigger argument just to run bigger long tubes than running these. But, you know, if you configure these, I mean, you can put the Ys way up here. You can put the Ys way down here, right? You can build custom, you know, Tri-Y headers. The, the Tri-Y design in of itself is a really good design. It's just you have to tailor where these Ys meet in order to achieve whatever power band you want to achieve. But these are just off the shelf. This is what we got, right? And speaking of which, where did we get them? All right, where did we get these from? Oh, and by the way, this, this is going on in the background. That's, uh, that's, that's actually one of my tripods that uh, is now unusable. Thank you very much, lady. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Can, can you see this face of guilt right here? Goodness me. Any hoozle. These, uh, these headers, right? These tri -wise, We got them from a place called GF. Right. Okay. Man, this is kind of hard to do with you sitting right there. 
Anyway, hey, I was here before you. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, all the inside, yeah, you won't be able to see it, but I, looking on the inside, the actual merging points look really nice. Overall, it's a fairly well-built header. I mean, it's not made out of super thin, chintzy uh, tubes that's just going to rust and completely disintegrate right away. It, it's not bad, really. It's pretty good. And the overall port, uh, uh, the overall port actually matches up to those AFR uh, heads fairly well. So we're not going to have uh, a little dinky port and a bigger port on the head or nothing like that. So they are, again, right there. That's what these are, and that's the price of them: one hundred and fifty-nine ninety-nine. <coughs> that is fairly cheap for you know a set of headers along with came all the hardware you'll need the gaskets actually fairly nice gaskets let me grab one here hold this why thank you these fairly nice metallic gaskets uh, not just chintzy paper ones so it came with these for the uh, actual header flange and it came with those for uh, the uh, collector flange here this unfortunately though is a two and a half inch collector not a three inch so that is the only bummer but I've been looking and off the shelf try wise two and a half inch seems to be the thing that they come with I just I, I haven't seen one with a three inch collector yet. If there is one, let me know. But that's okay because, you know, overall, they're just pretty good as far as I can tell. Like I said, I don't know what it's gonna do with, for power yet uh, until I actually get them on the car. Well, until I get an engine built for the car, put them on the engine, put the engine in the car, right? Or have the engine dyno tested before it goes in the car, which I might do, actually, to test a few things out. Uh, until then, we don't know exactly what they're going to do for the power. Because, uh, like I said, these kind of tune like shorty headers, and this Y down here will tune a little bit better. Uh, more like a long tube, but really, look how long that collector is. The normal collector on a long tube is about here, so that's still going to tune uh, more of a shorty header kind of thing. So we'll have to see if that's something we want uh, when the time comes. I mean, I guess, you know, that's as good of a review as I can really do. Oh, uh, nifty thing on them that I noticed. The firing order on a uh, small block Ford. These two pipes right here, uh, they're the uh, rear on the driver's side. These two pipes right here fire one after the other. And they did put them into two separate tubes. So they're not firing into the same one and seven eighths tube. That's pretty good attention to detail. Because the other one's just these two made it up and these two made it up. On that side with the firing order like that, they actually do uh, uh, change the tubes that meet up. So, that is nice. I don't know, that's, that's all I can come up with to say about these things, right? I, what do you think? What do you think of these? Kind of smudgy. Kind of smudgy? Yep. Well, it's because I've... Right there, right there, Oh well, yeah, I get right there. You know, a little smudgy, I guess. Well, I've been, you know, holding them. That, that's not their fault. All right, well, oh. Yeah. I guess one last thing I can say is, I don't know if you can see that, see there's an inner pipe right there, along with the outer pipe. This thing is double walled. That is a pretty hefty duty piece right there. That, yeah, that, that's hefty duty. So if, if this accidentally smashes something on the ground and you bottom out on it, it should survive it pretty well because that is... Uh, it, it's double walled thick piece of steel there. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. That's, that's these headers in a nutshell.
if you want them yourself, you can go and... Oh, uh, I guess I don't know if they're going to fit the car either. They're supposed to fit the car, but again, we won't know until we try it, okay? Which we will in the future. So until then, I'll catch you next time. Pretty good, huh? See, see how I did that? That's how a professional YouTuber does it right there, right? You had lots of accidents. I know. This is like the 37th try. I know. Even though I got done before you. Oh, well, you did. You just got it all off, didn't you? No, not all of it. You have, your, you have scissors in your hand. I only did a few snips. Let's go get some to eat. Yeah.